Laura Dan Atoma is one of the most iconic weightlifters of this generation. She is a multiple time world champion and a world record holder in the snatch. In 2018 and 2022, Toma won the world championships, while during the 2022 world championships, she set the world record snatch of 119 kilos. Toma has risen to popularity due to not only her incredible lifting, but also due to her fierce attitude to competition and training, which has earned her the nickname the Tomanator. Toma has competed across a wide variety of classes, and from what we know, her best back squat is an incredible 200 kilos, which she competed while competing in the 64 kilo category. So assuming her weight was close to 64 kilos at the time, this puts her at just over a triple bodyweight back squat, an absolutely incredible feat of strength. Toma has recently moved up in weight category, and as such we can assume her back squat has improved also, but she has yet to reveal this to us. Toma is not only a great example of what a good weight of her squat should look like, but she also does this in spite of her less than favourable leverages for high bar squatting. Now frequently we hear people talking about why their leverages preclude them from having a good quality squat. Generally the most common complaint is lifters with longer legs and a shorter torso. Toma fits quite nicely into this category, although not in the extremes, she's not the most perfect example of a high bar back squatter. For example, if we look at her snatch or her clean, we will see in the star position that her knees are quite far in front of the barbell. This is due in part to the length of her lower limbs forcing her knees to be slightly in the way. This is not an ideal scenario because if her knees are too far forward, we have to work harder for them to get out of the way of the barbell. Now you may remember from a previous episode, we had a similar lifter with Nino Pizzolato, an Italian lifter who also possessed quite long limbs relative to his torso, but still made this work for high quality squats. Toma is in a similar scenario, but achieves these high quality squats via a different mechanism. When we are squatting to improve our weightlifting, we have two main focuses. The first is to get as deep as possible. The second is to use the primary knee extensors as much as possible, aka the quads. The two of these objectives go hand in hand generally. The deeper we get, the further forward our knee position is, which will allow us to sit deeper, but still stay upright in the squat. This deep upright squat maximizes the use of our knee extensors. To showcase this, we can look at different lifters. For example, we could look at another Romanian lifter by the name of Cambe Valentina, the 2023 senior European champion. If we look at Valentina squatting, we can see she is generally built more towards what is considered a better build for high bar squatting. She squats with a high upright torso and with a lot of forward knee drives. As she descends into the bottom of the squat, she drives her knees forward to sit upright in the bottom and from here she achieves maximum depth with this ideal torso position. This allows her to train the most useful aspects of the squat, which for a weightlifter allows us to maintain that strong position and to strengthen the legs. Now when we look at Toma squatting, we can see a similar style of squat, even though she is built differently from Valentina. When we talked about Nino squat, we looked at some of the technical adjustments you could make to your squat that allow you to squat in a more favourable fashion. In Nino squat, we saw that he widened his foot stance to allow his hips to sit in between his feet. This allowed him to stay upright and achieve depth in his squat. Coupled with his slightly wider stance, he also had a slightly turned out toe position. When we look at Toma squat, however, we can see she squats with a relatively normal squat stance. What does relatively normal mean? Generally, this looks like a between hip width and shoulder width squat stance. Coupled with this, she has a largely straightforward toe position. This straightforward toe position allows Toma to drive her knees well over her toes. This maximizes our use of the knee extensors, which carries over to the first pull and to the extension of the snatch and the clean to a greater degree. This knees over toes style squat allows us to remain upright as much as possible, which helps us reinforce the position that we need in the bottom of the snatch in the clean. If Toma were to turn her toes out and stand slightly wider to allow her hips to sit in between her feet, she would be able to achieve quite the same level of depth or quite the same level of quad recruitment. Now the differences here are relatively small, but when we're looking to maximize our performance, it is the small aspects that create a large change. So how does Toma squat? with what, what would be considered a largely optimal squat technique while possessing non-optimal leverages. Toma achieves this optimal squat by exploiting some physiological changes rather than technical adaptions. The best part about this is that the vast majority of you watching this can also benefit from these physiological changes and also make these same or similar changes to your body. So what are these physiological changes? Well, 
it's pretty simple. It's high levels of mobility. When it comes to leverages, we, of course, for large parts, cannot change our leverages. We can influence them by gaining or losing weight, wearing weightlifting shoes, adjusting our technique, but we can't actually change them. Rather, we influence their effect on our movement. Your mobility, however, is largely under your control. Like many genetic properties, your inherent capabilities will be greater or less than other individuals. But like many genetic properties, these are influenced by our choices in our environment. Generally, the most important area when it comes to high bar squatting that we need to improve is our ankle mobility. Now people will often lament and say they can't improve their ankle mobility. They'll say that it's just not possible to have a large degree of dorsiflexion for them. Now, barring some horrific prior injury, uh, you can improve your ankle mobility to a very usable extent for the squat, but it does take some high levels of consistency and discomfort. I understand it sucks if your ankle mobility is inherently bad, if you don't have high levels of soft tissue pliability as an inherent trait. However, we have seen many individuals improve their ankle mobility through consistent and diligent work. Dara is a great example of one of these individuals. Prior to starting made of thing, Dara had 20 years of intense rugby training under his belt. Not only did this severely impact his mobility on top of his unfavourable leverages, but during this time, Dara actually actively looked to reduce the pliabilities of intendants to improve his speed and power. Dara took the same following steps to improve his mobility, which resulted in quite a static squat, including a 200 kg front squat and a 230 kg high bar back squat. First of all, how often you do these actions is just as important as what you do when it comes to improving your ankle mobility. When we're attempting to change your ankle range of motion, you need a high level of frequency to make a meaningful impact. This is due to the fact that the soft tissue involved in ankle range of motion is used almost every single day. It helps to think of ankle range of motion like rust on a machine. If a machine is not used frequently, the rust builds up over time. So when it comes to improving this ankle range of motion, we need to frequently oil the machine to reinforce these new positions. Now on top of that, as you walk every day, each lower limb takes the equivalent of your body weight or more and forces, potentially up to 10,000 times each or more. This provides for soft tissue, which is very resilient to change due to its high level of robustness. So when you're trying to improve your ankle range of motion, the first place to start is to do it almost every single day. The second aspect of this is given your ankle range of motion robustness, you're going to have to push a little more to achieve this new range of motion. The first place to start is to sit in the bottom of a bodyweight squat every day. Ideally, you would do this in the morning and at some point later in the day. Sit here and get comfortable with the bottom of the squat. Think of this as the foundation of improving your ankle range of motion for your squat. The second exercise to focus on is a straight legged heel drop. It's important to stretch the ankle soft tissue in a fully contracted position, aka the bottom of the squat, and a fully extended position to ensure we're covering all areas of the soft tissue. Thirdly, one of the most useful stretches for your ankles is a half kneeling weighted stretch. The use of a weighted ankle stretch is very useful in individuals with particularly tight ankles. As we spoke about the ankle's robustness and its ability to tolerate force, we need to apply some extra force to overcome this stiffness. These weighted ankle stretches are generally best placed after a general warm-up as the soft tissue surrounding the calf and ankle may not appreciate a weighted stretch in the absence of increased soft tissue temperature. The choice of weight we use should be based on the feedback you are getting from your stretches. If 2 kilos feels appropriate and you are achieving increased range of motion, then let the 2 kilos be the weight you use. Follow the feedback you are getting from the stretch. If you give the time to these stretches over the course of several months, your baseline for your ankle range of motion will be vastly improved and you will require less effort and frequency to maintain this new ankle range of motion. This is one of the most common problems in the high bar squat, but one of the most useful when addressed. A very welcome aspect of Toma squat, which is often overlooked, is the consistency of her arm and shoulder positions. Toma has quite a wide grip for her squats and usually this weight grip comes with the issues of looseness in the shoulders. The looseness particularly in females and lighter waist clad athletes, is often translated into an excessive upward drive of the elbows as they stand up from the squat. This upward elbow drive, if done correctly, may not be an issue, but it oftentimes can lead to the barbell being forced forward and a rounding of the upper back. In Thomas' case, we see her keeping her arms extremely secure and stable throughout the lift. Finally, the last thing you should really pay attention to with her squat is the sheer power and intent of the squats. Thomas sits into the squat with control and tension, 
but the upper drive is aggressive and explosive. This is the key. The back squat is a power development for her as a weightlifter, and you should treat it as the same if you're a weightlifter. Be aggressive as you stand up, really drive your feet into the floor, and get the barbell moving as fast as you possibly can get it to move. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Today's video is brought to you by the Seek of Strength Rotin Your Squat Program. It is two sessions per week, eight weeks in length. As we always say, it's tough, but it will reap the rewards if you give it your best shot.